hold on. Always check OBS for a microphone because sometimes it just goes poof. The shogun had abolished Yoshinobu Tokugawa left for Osaka. The old shogun and military followed, gathering most of their strength in Osaka. Even so, it was unclear how things would turn out. To predict the fate of the country required more information and insight than we possessed. What we did know, however, was that the Satsuma had grown more and more violent and needed to be stopped. Believing they were acting for the good of the country, the Shinsengumi set about trying to take back the imperial court from the Satsuma and the Chosu, and put Lord Yoshinobu back in power. January 16th. <laughs> January 16th. That's a, that's a day before my birthday, but I think in reality this might be... February? Because uh, Japan at the time did not use the calendar we use now. They use an entirely different calendar. But anyway. Shinsengumi along with men from several other domains were assigned to guard the Fushimi Magistrate's office. Most of the night patrols were done by the Fury Corps, which included Sanan, Heisuke, and Okita. Hmm? I wasn't worrying. Really? I was trying my best to keep it from showing on my face, but I guess Heisuke saw right through me. His voice sounded confident, but his face looked pale. Sure, that's fine. He turned and walked away, back into the building. Okita has a point. Seeing Sun and Sun act that way always made me nervous. I'd begun to worry that the bloodlust was driving him mad. Mm. I nodded and Heisuke jogged off after Sun and Sun. I grew worried and I turned to look at Okita. Um. Okita, are you alright? Does it hurt anywhere? Do you feel sick? Uh, he's seen through my plot so easily! <laughs> it didn't seem to matter to him, though, as he continued as if nothing had happened. I see. That was reassuring to hear. Although both of us felt the weight of that yet. Mind you, at this point, Sanan has been this way for... Three? Almost four years? And Hitsuke looked to only barely months. Or 
Okay, at least maybe probably a few weeks. I fell silent, unsure of what he meant. Was he trying to reassure me? Or was he trying to remind me that they were only doing fine thus far? He sighed in disbelief. Right. His tone broke no dissent. I can only nod. Nonetheless, the heaviness in my heart refused to lift. It looks like you're getting better, at least. I do have my reservations when it comes to that serum, but... Even so, I'm glad that you're getting better. Why did he get that reaction? Uh... Okta? Mm, your complexion looks way better. The cough that had grown progressively worse for that last several months was completely long gone. Not long gone. I was definitely glad he was better. Hmm? Uh, it was because I was worried about Okita. And that I could hardly tell him that. I felt silent. Hmm. I, I know that. But I can't just sit around. Besides,何もするななんて言ってないよ。君みたいなお子様は早く寝ろって言ってるの。昼間働けばいいじゃない。I wish sometimes when they wrote this line they actually listened to the line and actually make it accurate because he didn't say Saito. He said Hajime. I... Nighttime was when I felt the worst for standing by and doing nothing. But I didn't think Okita would understand that. Perhaps I was only in the way when I went out with the Fury Corpse. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving me alone. But I... I wasn't even sure myself why I was so determined, but I did know that I was worried for Okita. But there was no way I could say that to him. Fretting about it would do me little good. I balled my hands into fists, trying to clear my mind. I just need to do my best. If I could make myself useful, and there was no reason I couldn't keep working on the night patrols. January 18th. Two days after the Shinsengumi had been assigned to guard the magistrate office, I found myself woken suddenly from a nap. I didn't know why at first, but only that the compound was especially tense. Something had happened. <laughs> Was that Nagakura? What was going on? Sasato 
The rumble of marching echoed across the courtyard as Nagakura and his men departed. Ah, so Nagakura is the one that got the first division. What happened? I made my way through the crowd that had gathered until I found myself at the center. There before me. Kondo-san! He recognized me and managed a faint smile before sagging down, back down. Kondo's right so shoulder was overflowing with blood, dyeing his sleeves into a bright red. What happened? His wound. Oh no. What happened? あちらに部屋の用意が整いました。すまないな、山崎君。Gondo left the room as Yamazaki aided him. Uh, Yamazaki, is there anything I could do to help? いや、俺一人でいい。手が足りなくなればすぐに声をかけるから、君はここにいてくれ。Mm. Kondo-san headed towards the room as he let Yamazaki guide him. Shimano,何があったか話してくれ。はい。襲撃を受けたのは二条城からの帰り道でした。突如、馬上の局長が狙撃されたのです。不幸中の幸いと申しますが、近藤局長は。落馬なさいませんでした。周囲を視覚に取り囲まれましたが、それを突破してこの奉行所まで帰還いたしました。馬を狙われてたら死骸だった。でも、もし落馬していればきっと視覚から逃げ切れなかったと思います。Oh, this is oh, this is a bad situation. Uh Oh, shouldn't you be sleeping? He's a fury now. He shouldn't be up in the afternoon. He just laughed. ていうかその言葉、とっくりそのまま君に返したいんだけど。ま君も僕と同じ夜晩だったよね。どうして起きてるのさ。無理しないで寝なよ。あ、well. Uh, I was up because I was curious what the commotion was, just like Okita, but I wasn't a fury. The sunlight didn't bother me. There was no way I could say that now, though. Plenty of the rank-and-file soldiers were nearby, and they had no idea the Furies even existed. Is he gonna tell him? Mm. Yeah. His eyes went wide. I thought for a moment that Okita was going to grab Hishikata san and shake him. I'd never seen the man so agitated before. Oh, 
詳しい話を聞かせてください撃ったのは誰なんですもう殺すか捕まえるかしたんですよねそれについては俺の方から説明します実は Shimada calmly recounted the events up to Kondo san's shooting. Then, Kondo-san's very easy solution to this. Should have sent a bunch of men. At some point, must、uh, had to.、Uh... No, at some point, before he even reached the castle or was even visible to the castle, should have just went on ahead with just three men and had the rest of those men just wait there. That would have been the easiest solution, but no! ハルコトノホガダイジナンデスカ。ダレモンナゴトイテネダロガ。じゃあどうして。ポーチ。ホシさんを責めるのはオカドチガイダヨ。ゴエオナルベクスクナクシタイトユノワ。イサミさんがキ
近藤さんの容態はどうなんだ少しは持ち直してきたのか Actually, he has a high fever. He can't talk right now. もう少し技術の道具が揃った場所に移した方がいいんじゃないか。近藤さんも運が悪いよね。あ、来た。あれ、どうしたの？ <笑> I thought that something must have been off for Okita to joke so lightheartedly like that. What's gotten over you? Well, I'm not saying that. The grin was still there, and I wasn't quite sure how to respond to it. Could he really just laugh off something that so obviously had changed him? あ、僕、平助に用があるんだって。ちょっと行ってくるから、君はここで待っててくれる。うん。それじゃ、新発さんもサノさんもまた後でね。近藤さんのことよろしく。I sighed as I watched him head off towards the back of the compound. Later, I was with Yamazaki discussing what to do from now, and I returned to the common room. With nothing to do, I let my gaze shift up towards the star-speckled sky, star sky to watch thin clouds drift across the moon. I didn't realize how long I'd been standing there until Heisuke ran up to me. そうじのやつ見かけなかったか。どこにも見当たらねえみてえなんだけど。え?わ?What Something was definitely wrong. Heisuke, could you tell Hijikata-san that Okita has gone missing? I have a very bad feeling about this. Heisuke muttered under his breath as he scurried towards Hichikata-san's room. What should I do? I knew that I wasn't supposed to go out on my own without express permission from Hichikata-san, but... I recalled how Okita was behaving earlier this afternoon. He seemed so eerily calm, despite what had happened to Kondo-san. I couldn't just leave Okita out there by himself! I lost myself and ran out the door. <sighs> it didn't matter to me that I was running out of breath, and I just ran and ran through the night. <sighs> In the middle of a dim pathway, I'd finally found him. His sword was drawn. Bring being swung delicately in his hand, but his fierce eyes weren't playing around. Okita moved swiftly between a group of warriors, piercing a man in his throat before sliding to slice the leg of the man standing right behind him. He didn't even bother, bother to wipe the blood off. He just swung and swung and swung. この剣筋まさか新選組の起きたか。ごめんと。でも殺される寸前に気づくっていうのは
ちょっと遅すぎじゃないか新選組の沖田が来たここは引くぞだからな逃がすとでも思ってるの There was no hesitation in his movements. Even the Satsuma, skilled warriors in their own right, were no match against Okita. The man fighting in the street before me was no human, he was an engine of slaughter. Okita. There was no escape. Okita's skill as a human was practically speed and strength of a fury. He became a force of nature. Not one of the men before him would leave this street, that street alive. As the last fell, he slid his sword, still wet with blood, back into its sheath and turned in search of his next victim. Okita! I threw myself into his path. His gaze was almost sharp enough to draw blood. Okita's aura was radiating with a killer's intent. I almost froze in fear. I came to stop you. His expression twisted into something halfway between stunned, surprised, and disgust. There was a cold fury underneath this there was a cold fury beneath his words that made my throat tighten. Is this really going to help the Shinsengumi? <sighs> if you really think it's your duty to kill all these men like this, then why did you leave without telling anyone? You already know, don't you? This is wrong. <laughs> Yes, I am. He wanted to kill anyone who, who'd had a hand in the attack on Kondo-san. That was his reason. I knew it. Well... How should I answer this? I want you to do the right thing. Okita. It wasn't easy to say what I wanted to, but I pushed forward. If I happen to let the wrong thing slip, it may give him the wrong impression from me. But I still felt like he needed to hear this. You said yourself that it was your decision to drink the water of life. That this was the path you chose. To be a fury. His glare didn't waver. If you believe in the path you chose, then shouldn't you be trying to follow it the right way? He looked down, and I was surprised to see pain on his face. 
人を殺すことしかできないんだ正しいとか悪いなんて基準は僕には元からないんだよ近藤さんのためになるんならどんな相手でも切ってみせる今までずっとそうやって生きてきたんだから Although his stubbornness was showing, I could see that emotions, the emotions pooling in his eyes, as if this were difficult for him to talk about. I didn't know what kind of life he had lived up until this point, or what kind of thoughts were drifting and colliding inside of him to bring these emotions out enough for him to say it aloud. But if you just think of yourself as a weapon, I took a deep breath. I think that's fine. If he wants to live as a Shinsengumi's sword, it wasn't my place to say otherwise. I knew that, but. But I don't think you should lie to your own heart. <laughs> I think I understand how you feel. Kondo san is really important to you. Okita loved Kondo san like a brother. How could he simply sit by and do nothing after seeing someone he cared about nearly killed? Sitting by his bedside all day isn't going to make him heal any faster. And protecting the magistrate's office isn't going to save Kondo san no matter what you do. Okta must have felt helpless, and so he turned to the one thing he could give him the he could that that could give him the control over life and death he so greatly desired battle. I truly understand how you feel. But please, don't lose sight of who you are. Is it really your duty to let your emotions control you? Is that the kind of warrior you are? The fact that you can only kill people, do you really think that's all you have going for yourself? Okita stared down at me as if I were the most irritating thing in the world for him to look at. But eventually. How many times had I heard him say he would kill me? Okita! Behind the cold eyes of his gaze, I could sense a man who would kill without a second thought. Perhaps this would be the time he finally made good on that threat. But even so, I had to stop him. I won't move. If he let his emotions get the better of him, he would surely regret it later, and I couldn't bear to think of him suffering like that. Even if it meant I had to put my life on the line, I would stop him. If you really want to go, then you'll have to kill me first! His eyes bore into mine, and for several very long seconds, neither of us spoke. He could have easily killed me with the sword in his right hand. But his eyelashes shook faintly. I can't just forget about you. Was I imagining things? His words didn't seem to have the usual snide edge attached to them. 
Just as the silence began to stretch to uncomfortable levels, I heard a voice. This voice. ハラダ、サイトさん。局長の容態は峠を越えた命に別状はないだろう。Really? ほんとに近藤さんは俺がこう言った場での冗談をほのむかどうかはあんたが一番よく知っているはずだ。これ以上局長にご心配をかけるようなまねはするな。そっか。近藤さん、助かるんだ。よかった。He looked like he couldn't find any other words. I saw his shoulders relax. Me being scolded by Harada, the day has come. Under Harada's hard gaze, I suddenly remembered that I'd left the compound without permission. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. No sooner were the words out of my mouth. Then we heard the frantic tweeting of a whistle from some distance away. Mm. We ran as fast as we could towards the Fushimi Magistrate's office. When we returned, Hijikata-san was waiting for us. He was not pleased, as the man should. Taku. Although his words were rough, it looked like Hijikata-san was relieved. He must have been worried about us, especially Okta. Hijikata-san. Kondo-san,が助かったから、僕も今回は多めに見てあげようと思います。My God, Okita. Ah, sorry, I didn't know you. As he finished, Okita's voice turned suddenly harsh. And then spun on his heel and stormed from the room. Uh, uh, no. Uh, I, uh... I had left the compounds without permission. Or approval. I wasn't sure, though, if it meant that I'd be held responsible as well. My heart was pounding. I <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Ishikata casually passing the blame to Okita. Mm. Yeah, he didn't want to didn't know how to respond. Hijikata-san wasn't usually... nice. Thank you, Hijikata-san. I bowed and turned to leave. 
Nearly at the door and almost out of earshot, I heard him murmur to himself. Ow! That hurts a bit. That hurts a bit. Mm. What the fuck is going on upstairs? Are they moving shit? Anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, the next day, December 10th. What? Uh, at some point, I gotta figure out the actual dates. I didn't wake up until evening had arrived. No, wait. Oh, God, what is wrong with this calendar system? I can't tell if it's the calendar system or localization because the calendar system is actually a bit fucked up because sometimes you can get two months in a year. Don't ask me how. Apparently it's so... I must have been more tired than I thought. It was nearly time for the night shift to begin, so I leapt into my clothes and dashed out of my room. Mm Okta! Hmm? Do you know where Kondo-san is? I went to check up on him, and I didn't see him. Matsumoto-sensei. Gets on your case? Okita, that's not it. He's very worried about your health. It looked as if Okita had calmed down, but only the day before he'd run off all on his own. I had to keep up my guard. No sooner had I spoken than a gunshot shattered the night, night air. I saw Okita's jaw clench. Okita! No! I rushed to stop Okita, but... Several more gunshots went off in succession, almost as if they were provoking us. He dashed by me and ran off towards the son of sound of gunfire. God fucking damn it, Okita! Okita! I ran after him. My voice is very raspy today. Well, it's because... I'm worried about you, Okita. Because I was worried about you, Okita. I understand that, but just know, I was worried. I was sure my feelings were nothing but a burden for Okita. But that didn't mean I could just walk out on him either. Huh? I'd expected him to be sneering over me with a cold expression, but... Uh, wait! My breaths were quick and staggered as we ran through the chilly Kyoto evening. It seems as though many civilians had been frightened from the sound of battle, so many homes were shut and locked. There were no signs of people anywhere. Okta picked up something in his periphery, and he disappeared into the alleyway. I rushed to follow him. Kondo-san 
Chin. Okita brooded with a silent, murderous glare. As I looked to see at whom Okita was glaring... Karu! Bitch, that's because it's your fucking name. I bit my lip. It was Kaoru who tricked Okita into drinking the water of life, but he was still my brother. I knew he was not a good person, but... Okita, on the other hand, seemed to have no such reservations. それとも喋りたくなるようにさせてあげようか。この件で。やれやれ。証拠もないくせに俺を疑うの。これだから人間ってやつは。そういえば、ちょうどあの日だったかな。ご両親の残党にあったよ。See, I don't trust shit that comes out of your mouth, Kaoru! Guardians of the Imperial Tomb? Kaoru,生死討ちにされた伊藤の恨みをどうしても晴らしたいんだって。けど、分業所に打ち行っても、仇討ちを成功させる交差は低いって言ってたから。then you I think I know what you actually intended. Okita snarled, and I saw his body tense to attack. So did Kaoru, and with another cruel grin, he snapped his fingers. From the shadows, men suddenly appeared. Huh? Okita and I stood for a moment, stunned by surprise, and Kaoru took the opportunity to put some distance between us. Both of them wore cynical, twisted grins. They glared at one another. I inched my hand toward my sword. I didn't know how much I'd be able to do, but... I wouldn't go down without a fight. <laughs> Why was Kaoru doing this? What could he be thinking? いいことがあるなら担当直入に言ってくれる。別に、お前と話してるわけじゃないよ。弱いやつから狙った方が楽かもねって。当場派の皆さんに提案してるだけ。As he spoke, I suddenly realized all the guns were pointed towards me. 大した性格の悪さだ。the guns exploded with noise no if we were this surrounded there was no way the both of us could dodge them all (sighs) 
Something blocked my vision. No. <laughs> Suddenly, he was standing in front of me. All of the bullets that would have hit me were taken by him. Hokita! Why? Why would you do that? I was speechless. Blood was already beginning to pour from his body. The sight of him tattered and bullet holes tore my heart apart, but he'd endured the pain, turning around to look at me. No! No, I'm fine! You took them all! He smiled out of relief. He wavered, then collapsed to the ground in a heap. Hakita! Ah, oh, no, here I gotta scream again. <clears throat> Hakita! Hakita! So he could get horribly wounded, but as long as I wasn't hurt, it was okay? It's not okay. It's not okay at all! I felt my vision start to blur, and I realized suddenly that I was crying. I... I... My voice broke as I tried to speak. If you get hurt, that makes me sad too! It kills me to see you hurt, just as much as it kills you to see Koldo's son hurt! I kept calling his name, but he didn't answer. He was still breathing, but each breath drew a pain groan from his chest. Akita! If it were just shallow wounds from the bullets, then it shouldn't be too serious, but... If his vital organs were hurt, then his life would undoubtedly be in danger. It was only then that I heard Kaoru's laughter. You. The blood drained from my face. You were trying to shoot him the whole time, weren't you? I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but I had no rebuttal. If I hadn't been there, then Okita wouldn't have been hurt. He never would have been shot, and he might have been able to fight his way out of Kaoru's trap. But I had been there, and now he was dying, and it was all my fault. Kaoru's smile was suddenly gone. At Kaoru's signal, the men drew back. Damn you! The words were out of my mouth before I realized I was saying them. Kaoru turned to look over his shoulder at me and smiled. I 
With one last horrible smile, Kaoru and his men disappeared into the night. After what seemed like an eternity, I heard the murmur of voices. It was the Shinsengumi soldiers who'd been sent out to investigate the gunshots. We carried the barely conscious Okita back to the magistrate's office together. They probably had had those revolvers, I realize. Each man had fired off several shots without reloading. But why won't Okita wake up then? We kept tending to his scars, but Okita's wounds weren't healing. He'd fallen into unconsciousness and continued bleeding even after the bullets were removed. Ichikata-san called me into his room. It's fine. Osaka。I wanted so badly to be by Okita's side, but I knew that I needed to tend to the wounded here, including Yamazaki. If I leave Okita to Matsumoto-sensei, I think everything will be alright. As I turn these thoughts over in my mind... What? I wasn't expecting this. My eyes grew wide. I can go with Okita? No, it's not that at all. I was just wondering why, though. Ejikata-san. I almost cried. I was so thankful for him. I could still be with Okita. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I bowed deeply to Hijikata. Ah! <laughs> On December 20th, I headed towards Osaka Castle with Okita. Yamazaki came with us to guard us. We had Matsumoto-sensei perform an initial examination on Okita, but his condition didn't improve. As a result, I'd had many sleepless nights. The new year passed, and it was January 3rd. Word came from the messenger that a battle had erupted between the shogunate forces and the Satsho troops. And then, we discovered how the end of the battle turned out before even the Shinsengumi was told. Okita, how do you feel? Hey, what are you doing? 
何言って決まってるじゃないこれからここで戦いが始まるんでしょうなら僕も行かないと You can't Please you need to rest You're in no condition to be up yet Besides Even if you go now I don't know what good he'll be able to do どういう意味僕なんかじゃ役に立たないって言いたいの That's not what I mean. I wasn't sure if I had the courage to tell Lokita what happened over the past few days. But if I were to avoid it, I was sure that Okita, whose wit often preceded him, would see right through me. I want you to remain calm as I tell you this. Despite the Shinsengumi's best efforts, the magistrate has fallen. Supposedly, Inoue was one of the lives lost in the ensuing battle. Hi. And the Supreme Commander, Lord Yoshinobu, has already departed for Edo. So it seems like we, too, will be heading for Edo aboard a ship. As the weight of the truth began to settle for Okita, it seems as though he struggled to speak. He powerlessly slumped on top of his bed. So, Gensan, Nakunatan, Kondo san. Mm. Very much so. Okita held his head low, and he muttered to himself softly, almost like a one-way conversation. That Sinsh... Oh, that's still him. I see process the news he repeated this phrase I it almost felt as though he were lost in a trance attempting to make meaning of a purpose for which he had worked his entire life but it pained me to see Okita so broken hearted, so I couldn't help but chime in. I wasn't sure if my words would be enough to resonate with him, but. But, Okita, you protected me. Despite not being a member of the Shinsengumi, you risked your life to defend me. I'm very thankful for you. If you weren't there, Okita, I could have died. Besides, Hijikata san and the rest of the men haven't given up yet. You said that when we return to Edo, we're going to make a huge comeback, and by then, I'm sure Kondo san will be ready to go. Okita paused, scratching his chin in thought as he looked towards the ground. そうだよね。あれだけ性格も諦めも悪い土方さんがこのまま<笑> last, I sense Okita was regaining his composure. 僕の刀を取ってくれる方。before I did so, I stared into his eyes to check and make sure he seemed out of his slump. All right. I grabbed a sword, which was displayed upon a rack, and I handed it to Okita. However, when he'd held the sword in his hand, his tone reverted to the melancholy from earlier. 
僕はまだ新選組の剣でいられるかな His words inflicted a dull pain upon my heart. I could tell his mind was lingering on the thought of Kondo san, as well as the Shinsengumi, which to Okita represented the wishes of Kondo san himself. Okita couldn't separate himself from the idea that his own well being and interests were nothing compared to those of whom he remained loyal. There was something I noticed about Okita. Yes, so please, rest for now. So don't worry. When the time comes for you to hold your sword, you'll be there. I couldn't tell if his newfound motivation was out of extreme loyalty to Kondo san, or if he'd even be willing to slash at his own body, should it not recover at, as we hope it will. Ultimately, it was his humanity I worried for most. Although, knowing Okita, he doesn't share the same fear. As the pain my heart began to subside, I couldn't contain the tears which began welling in my eyes. And so, I had joined Okita on this journey back to Edo for whatever future was waiting for us on our return. And we're done! God, there was a lot I didn't remember about this. Uh, I still don't know where to put him as of now. <laughs> uh. Morikubo is just too fucking good at his job. He's way too good. Uh, I like debating if I should cover this song too. Please drink water. That's a lot of companies for casting. Also, Carrot House always amuses me as being the name of the recording studio. <laughs> there was one editor! Okay, that explains uh, a lot. How the fuck? Right, one editor for localization, huh? Well, we're... Ugh. January, 1868. The Battle of Toba Fushimi ended with the Satsuma and Choshu victories, victorious. As the shogunate troops retreated, the Shinsengumi headed towards Edo. Four years ago, I came to Kyoto all by myself in search for my father and met the Shinsengumi. I am going to leave the city of Kyoto where I made fond memories with the Shinsengumi. Despite the defeat, his resolve didn't waver. 
and I have chosen to walk alongside him. We are going to head to Edo, without knowing what fate awaits us. One half of the story completed! Yes, we're going to Edo Blossom. <laughs> Alright. Shit. <laughs> is it. I think Okita is the other DLC, not this one, right? Yes, the other DLC. So. Uh, we're gonna switch! Give me a few seconds. You're gonna see absolutely nothing. And then I'm gonna go and uh, boot up the other one. Do, 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 do. Gotta update, gotta update. Need to update. Give me Edo Blossoms. That's what we're doing. Tell me that updated. Yeah, it updated. Hooray. Ah. Oh, did it go through? There it is. Okay, there we go. We're fine! We're fine. And, uh... New game! Yes, we're sticking with Chizuru. Because that way we get the voice to lines. Alright, where is the guide? There's the guide. I found it. Chapter 1 should be short. Also, if you weren't here for the wheel last night, uh... The wheel had chosen that after Okita, we are going to, uh... Be doing Hijikata's route. So uh, let's continue our journey with Okita. Chapter one should be that long, and then uh, I'm gonna end the stream and prepare for art stream hours later and eat, cause that's important. Winter, 1864. In order to find my father, with whom I'd lost contact, I, Chizuru Yukimura, visited Kyoto. In the city, I bore witness to a horrifying secret hidden within a group called the Shinsengumi, the Fury, a creature with white hair and crimson eyes. Luckily, I was saved from the vicious clutches of the Fury by Okita of the Shinsengumi. Because I had discovered the Shinsengumi secrets, it was proposed that I live with the Shinsengumi men since they were also searching for my father. As such, I was to serve under Hijikata-san as the commander's page, a role I performed proudly, so thus began my life with the Shinsengumi. I heard rumors, well, whispers really, that the Shinsengumi were little more than a bunch of crooked ronin, but my life with them proved otherwise. Their commitment to protect the safety of Kyoto made them the last of a dying breed, true samurai. Okita had a penchant for a floof, a flu, a, <laughs> a floofless, a loofness. And it was difficult to get a good read on him at first glance, but his swordsmanship was unparalleled, which honored him with the distinction of being the Shinsengumi's captain of the first division. A while ago, I had discovered Okita's secret. He contracted a case of tuberculosis. Day by day, his condition would worsen, soon becoming so unbearable that he could barely rise from his futon. 
In a desperate measure to regain his strength and wield his sword once more, he drank the water of life to become a fury. At the time, the fate of the shogunate was threatened by the Satsuma, I'm just gonna say Satcho, by the Satcho, which later cum culminated in an inevitable battle for control of the nation. Our chief at the time, Kondo san, had an attempted assassination performed on his life, which worked to demoralize our forces in one of our darkest hours. Behind all of this was Kaoru Nagumo, a person who I later realized was my long-lost twin. Okita's loyalty to Kondo-san bloomed due to a thirst for revenge for Kaoru's actions. When it came time for the two to battle, Kaoru shot Okita with a silver bullet. Unfortunately, the battle ended in favor of the Satcho, and the Shinsengumi were driven from Kyoto. They set sail for Edo in hope of a new start. A floofness. <laughs> All right, where are we this time? Because the for Nagakura, that surprised me where we were at the start. <laughs> Achievement unlocked! Sixth story, dude! The fuck? It had been over four years since I last set foot in Edo. Hearing the bustle of people passing by in a familiar dialect was a comfort in the chaos of my return. Honestly, I had barely any time to process what had happened in Kyoto, let alone give myself time to re-acclimate re re to the city where I had been raised. Something else entirely had me preoccupied. I softly opened the sliding door, careful so as to not wake up Okita, and I peeked inside to check on him. Soji Okita! A sly, sardonic swordsman who had once been considered the sword of the Shinsengumi. After drinking the water of life given to him by Kaoru Nagumo, he became a fury. We were staying in a hiding place that that I was about to say doctor. We were staying in a hiding place that Matsumoto sensei had arranged for us. Hiding place, location where Soji Okita was recuperating for his tuberculosis. Matsumoto Sensei had made arrangements for it and it is located in Sen Sendagaya. For now, this was to be our temporary home. He was still bedridden from his injuries. Moving proved to be difficult for him still, as he would wince at even the slightest provocation. Back in Kyoto, Okita risked his life by jumping in front of the path of a bullet speeding towards me. This sentence has uh, omitted the fact that it was several, not just one. Maybe it is one. No. No, because the sound effects is... <laughs> Never mind me. A normal human would have died then and there. It was nothing short of a miracle that he was still alive. I was beyond relieved, of course, that he had lived, but there was something that still bothered me. <clears throat> I looked at him, watching his face twist from the agonizing pain he must have been experiencing. <clears throat> Okita! Gently, I wiped sweat from his forehead. It hurt to see him in so much pain, but all I could do was wait and pray. I was curious about something, however. Although a bullet wound was nothing to scoff at, Okita was a fury, 
A wound of this severity should have, with his condition, healed a long time ago. Both San and San and Heiske seem confused by this as well. I held his soft, trembling fingers in my hands, clasping them tightly for comfort. Some time later, his eyes slowly fluttered open. Ugh. He blinked sleepily, and its gaze drifted over to meet mine. Eventually, his eyes gleamed and he nodded. Suddenly, I felt self-conscious and my palms became a little clammy as I shifted my line of sight. Ah. Uh. How are you feeling, Okita? I tried to keep my voice cheerful. Are you sure? You aren't just saying that? I'm sorry. It's not that I don't trust you or anything, Okita. He had a point. Compared to last night, Okita seemed to be improving in his condition, and even speaking seemed to inflict less of a strain on him. On him. I could appreciate this much, at least. Mm, it has. Do you want to get up? I helped steady him as he sat up, conscious of his wounds. He winced at one of them. He winced as one of them twinch, and then he turned to look at me. Sure. What is it? I had expected him to ask about how Kondo-san was doing, or about how any, or how any of the other Shinsugumi members were. However, this question blindsided me, and I found myself on the spot without anything to say. However, Okuta seemed to take pleasure from my surprise, and he stared into my eyes. <laughs> you know exactly why, bitch. Well, uh... <laughs> oh, we're going with this answer. Is it a bad thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, of course. I mean, the reason we're having this conversation about your condition is because of me, Okita. Okita pursed his lips, looking off to the side in a fit of feigned indifference. What? I couldn't tell if I was imagining things or if he actually seemed put off by my presence. However, I didn't have the time to think of a response. Uh, that's not true. I'm resting well. Of course. I mean, I was thinking of a convincing explanation when. Ah, no! <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, he would, though. He, he would absolutely call out my bullshit lying. Okita and Yamazaki had never gotten along. I can't believe you'd both gang up on me like this. What? Can't stop thinking about you. How many times am I going to be called a bitch throughout this series? Of course, I had been worried about how Okita was doing, but I didn't know that my behavior became a cause for concern for them, too. I mean, if Yamazaki were the one actually suggesting that I take a breather. Susano Yamazaki, a member of the Shinsengumi's Watch Division, which is the center of its covert operations. His sleuthing skills pair with his skill as a medic, which were honed under the guidance of Matsumoto. I think I will rest for a little bit then. Please call for me if anything happens. I was almost two steps out of the door when I got the sense something was off. <laughs> Okita's eyes rolled up into his head and he collapsed on to the floor unconscious. Okita! I immediately bolted to him, lowering myself to the ground to try and lift him up, but he moaned unintelligibly and his breath was labored. Labored? Labored. Yamazaki! Okita's! Okay. No sooner had I nodded my head before Yamazaki dashed out of the room. Hang in there, Okita. The doctor will be here soon. All I could do was tuck him back under the covers and wait silently. Sensei, how Really? What a relief. I let out an uneasy sigh. Even if he was okay, I still regretted allowing Okita to even think. What? I still regretted allowing Okita of even thinking about exerting himself. If only I realized he was fatigued. As I tossed these thoughts about in my mind, Yamazaki's brows furrowed. Matsumoto Matsumoto Sensei looked at the two of us and he silently nodded before speaking up. The spot where Okita had been shot was a small one. As long as he wasn't shot in the heart, it shouldn't have affected him as much as his, as this had. The bullet? 
Silver, a precious metal that acts as a poison to furies. Somehow it counteracts their regenerative abilities, thus making them vulnerable to normal weaponry. Alright. Silver? Why would they use such a valuable metal? Other than sunlight. So, what does that mean for Okita? Matsumoto sensei turned to face the door of Okita's room. What? なんとかしてやりたいが、私の遺術はあくまでも人間用なんでな。報道さんならもしかしたら羅刹の傷を癒す方法を知ってるかもしれんが。Right. Of course. My father had been doing fury research. どうした、雪村君? Maybe there may be some information about the furies in the house where I grew up. I mean, my father did his fury research here under orders of the Shogunate, right? So, Maybe I'll find something useful. Alright, I'll head over there tomorrow. I turned to look at Yamazaki. My time in Kyoto was often under the close watch and control of the Shinsengumi. But this had to do with Okita's health. Neither Yamazaki nor Hijikata could possibly reject my initiative to help him, could they? It seemed like Yakuza Yamazaki contemplated the situation to himself, stroking his chin intently. Yes, we're taking best boy with us! Are you sure that's alright? But then who's going to watch after Okita? <laughs> My brain just made a connection right now. Uh, hmm. I just realized how strange this situation really is. Ha! Alright. Yamazaki-kun-ni-dokou-shite-morai-nasai. Okay, please take care of Okita. We'll be as thorough as possible, and we'll return here as soon as we get something. よし。それでは今日はもう休むとしよう。明日早朝に出ることにするって。うん、understood. Yamazaki and I left the following morning, and we had come to my home in the outskirts of Edo. Mm. I hadn't seen it in years, but I didn't have the time for nostalgia. Nerves made me tense and jumpy. Would we even find anything? The first thing we came in contact with was the stale, dust-filled air wafting to us, and I couldn't help but cough. The floor was covered in a layer of dust so thick, it almost reminded me of a fresh blanket of snow. Yeah. Yeah. Which meant my father hadn't returned. I felt both disappointment and relief well up within me. If he wasn't here, then where could he be? Yukimura-kun,ラセツの資料がある場所の検討を作る。Hmm... Hi! I think they're around here somewhere. わかった。それでは手分けして探すことにしよう。We spent the better part of several hours looking through every nook and cranny of the dust-covered house for a potential cure clue for the Furies. Eventually, it seemed as though Yamazaki came across something, and he exclaimed in horror. HORROR! Hmm. 
if this part is what I think it is, because I haven't played this before, did they add it specifically for this? And, or was it in the original, I wonder? Well, we we're about to find out. Hearing him read the notes aloud made me shiver as the hair along my arms stood up. Uh, Yamazaki, what did you find? ジミズは飲んだものの肉体を活性化させ野生の獣を凌駕する体力で比類なき治癒力をもたらすだがその力の代償はその人間の命そのものなのだ。オッケー、maybe I I couldn't believe what I was reading in the notes Yamazaki found. And then it seemed to slip from out of my hands to float towards the ground. Using One Fury's powers directly affected their lifespan. So then for Okita's life, it meant... My feet felt numb upon the ground, and as the feeling began to slip away, I almost fainted. <laughs> Yamazaki is a fucking rock. Yamazaki snapped me out of it, affecting his voice into a bark that Hijikata san would have been proud of. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mm. Scanning through page after page of my father's fury research told us far more than we could have anticipated. Those who drank the water of life to become furious were also imbued with beast-like qualities. Qualities that unsurprisingly caused an unprecedented toll on the human body beyond what a normal human could likely withstand. The amount of stress imposed by the serum forces the body to succumb to the terrible bloodlust. All of the information we had gathered presented and presented an even harsher reality than we hoped for. But there was one silver lining. I think I found a set of instructions to concoct the medicine that will suppress the bloodlust. If this works and we can suppress the bloodlust, I think it'll be enough to help Okita. Hmm. Reading through the list now, there are some ingredients we will have to prepare, but... Can you help me with this, Yamazaki? Together, Yamazaki and I followed my father's recipe exactly how it was written on the note. Somehow, we managed to make the medicine. Unfortunately, we hadn't learned anything about how we might heal Okita's wounds. By the time we finished and returned back, the sun has started to set. That took quite a while, huh? Yamazaki beckoned me to come forward, and just as I was about to rush out of the house, something akin to a moving specter seemed to come out from nowhere. And it startled me. You know, Zaki had only taken a single step when. <laughs> oh no! Yamazaki groaned loudly before falling into the floor. Yamazaki! I ran towards him frantically. What? Ah! It's the brat. I stopped dead in my tracks for someone who was near. I couldn't exactly make out the specter because of the sunset's glare, but it was someone whose face was unforgettable. Kaoru, what are you doing here? 
どうしたって決まってるじゃないか可愛い妹の顔を見に来たんだよ I clasped my hand around the Kodachi on my hip, glaring back at Kaoru's face, whose expression was almost identical to my own. Stop it! Kaoru's eyebrows shot up and his grin widened. Kaoru! The angrier, angrier I got, the wider his smug grin stretched. Even though I knew it would just rile him up, I couldn't stay calm. No! I won't let that happen to Okita! As long as we have the medicine the Yamazaki and I toiled over, the bloodlust should be suppressed. There was no way Okita would turn into a beast. コードを <laughs> I could feel the blood draining from my body. Of course, I knew the medicine was only a temporary solution, but... As Kaoru rattled off these condescending questions, he still kept the smug expression on his face. <laughs> My eyes grew wide. This came out of nowhere. Was he trying to play a trick on me? He may have been getting a kick out of trying to fluster me, but... Even if he were trying to get aroused from me, I had to hear what he had to say, so I let him continue. Kaoru luckily wasted no time in speaking up. Togoku, a term referring to the eastern coastal region of Japan. Hey, wait! With that, Kaoru smiled dryly and I called out to him, but he had already disappeared like a shadow into the ether. If what he said was true, then allowing Okita to drink my blood would possibly work as a salve to the Water of Life's side effects. However, knowing Kaoru, this was all a ploy to get my hopes up. What if, though, what he said was true? Yamazaki regained consciousness, and he slowly gathered himself to gain footing. Are you all right? 
I ran up to Yamazaki. Sure. はい。The sun had completely set and we were covered by the darkness as we rushed to return for Senda Sendagaya. However, the entire time we rushed back, I couldn't quite shake what Kaoru had told me. Once we finally arrived back at the hiding place, we rushed to tell Matsumoto Sensei all that had happened. What do you think, Matsumoto Sensei? Do you think if I were to give him my blood that we could curb the effects of the water of life? ヤマザキ君の言う通りだな。そんな例は今までに一つもない。聞き目がないだけで済めばいいが、もしかしたらドクとなることだって十分に考えられるんだぞ。ひとまず薬は調合できたんだろう。なら当分はそれでしのぐ
どっちがマシかって言えば答えなんて分かりきってるし There was a peaceful twinkle in his eye as if he had come to terms with his condition and his future Such certainty felt so unfamiliar to me でも不思議な話だよね病気でも何でもなかったゲンさんが鳥羽伏見の戦で死んじゃったのに老害にかかってる上落ち水まで飲んだ僕がこうして生きてるなんて運がいいのか悪いのかわからないなオクタ My heart clenched He seemed to embrace the fact that his health was wilting, and yet he stood courageously before it. Perhaps. Perhaps it was this attitude all along that had me so curiously drawn to him. Please don't give up. You are still alive, Okita. Even if you seem resigned to the fact that he could potentially die in the near future, I didn't want him going anywhere. <laughs> His complexion still seemed very ill. But even then, Okita possessed within him a fiery vigor. Good. The future was still uncertain, but so long as Okita believed in himself, there was hope. Although we couldn't see into the future, He did nothing to waver his spirit from the dawn of a better day. Okita, please return to your bed. It's not good for you to be standing for too long. Just as he began to whine, <coughs> Okita kneeled over and his face twisted in pain. He slammed against the floor as he gasped for air. Okita! I rushed to support his body as he had trouble staying upright. What's wrong? Is it your injuries? Okta shook his head as he grimaced loudly from whatever he'd been from whatever had been hurting him. <laughs> as I watched, his hair turned white and his eyes turned red. Oh no. He had expressed ex Experiencing some minor pains from using his powers before, but I don't ever recall him becoming a fury without using those powers consciously. And I must mean. <laughs> the way he angrily mentioned for me to stay back told me this wasn't the first time he was changing. He almost seemed ready to accept what came next. Okita, do you. Was this seizure like episode a symptom of being a fury? Do you want my blood? His eyes grew wide. His reply was practically a shout, but all the reason to assume that's what he wanted. <laughs> His voice shook as he spoke. Whether from pain, fear, or both, I couldn't tell. Both of us saw plenty of furies go mad with bloodlust. But you're in so much pain. <laughs> <sighs> Okita had drunk the water of life to make him a more effective soldier. All he wanted to do was to help Kondo san. If he lost himself in the bloodlust, he would be denied that one desired. Desire. Eh. So, how long have you been doing this? How horrible. To be all alone, tormented by pain so great that even breathing was agony. 
できないわ我慢できる僕は近藤さんの弟弟子なんだからこんなものに負けるほど弱くない He seemed to think he could endure through sheer force of will. But. You don't look fine at all! I could hear my voice break, and tears had begun to well up in my eyes. I wrapped my arms around Okita and held him tight. What was I going to do? Well, if we've learned anything from Magakura's run, the obvious answer to get the very good ending. It's to give him blood. If I remembered what Kaoru said correctly. By making Okita drink demon's blood, we may be able to undo some of the symptoms that came with drinking the water of life. Matsumoto sensei, on the other hand, had his doubts. But I don't have the luxury of chewing, choosing my methods. I drew out my Kodachi and put it to my wrists. There was a brief moment of pain, and like, and then a line of blood welled up along the cut. Please, drink this. I held up my arm to him, and his eyes widened. By the time my arm reached him, the cut had already closed, but the blood still sat there on top of the smooth skin. I heard that my blood could counteract the poison of the water of life. Maybe he was influenced by the scent of blood. His eyes showed signs of famine. I don't know if what Kaoru told me was true, but if I could, even for a moment, be able to quench his thirst. I just want to help you. So please. He had he said nothing as he moved his face towards the blood shining on my arm. He was when he was close enough that I could feel his breath brushing across uh, I need to read that again when he was close enough that I could feel his breath brushing across my arm my skin it's, it's fuck his mouth opened and he ran his tongue across my arm the vigor behind the movements of his mouth made for a tingling sensation taking with it my blood His voice was low and almost embarrassed. I blinked in surprise. I could never recall a moment where I'd heard his voice speak so weakly. I shook my head. There's nothing for you to apologize for. He looked down at the floor, his face strained. It almost looked as though he'd been scolded by Kondo-san. Although he was still pale, it looked as though the bloodlust had subsided. His hair and eyes returned to their normal color. You really should rest now. That would be the best way for you to recover. I just told you that you have nothing to apologize for, didn't I? Nokita mm. nodded obediently and he crawled back under his covers. Oyasumi, Okita. Please don't hesitate to call for me if you need anything. I could see how much pain he was in, and my heart went out to him. He clearly expressed that he didn't want to drink any blood, but... At least his suffering had subsided, even if it were just a little bit. I was left to ponder the possibility, could we truly cure the curse of the fury with my blood? For now, my only option was to monitor his progress, but... The next day, 
Okito seemed to be healing at a much more rapid pace. Oh shit, it worked. I didn't know what Kaoru's intentions were. But for now, I'm going to just be thankful of Okito's recovery. Eighteen sixty eight February I uh think this is where we stop for now. Oh man, we took a bath. <sighs> that bath was exactly what I needed. I'll give you that line. Save Save. Did I load? Yes. Yes. Oh, it's the 17th. I suddenly remember there's something a part of my job that I should be doing that I have to do. Man. Bouncy castle brain is not, uh... It's not working out for me. Alright. We're back at 8 EST for art stream where I figure out how the fuck do I color an animation? Uh, so, uh, bye-bye, drink water, and I'll see you next time. We'll also be back with more Edo Blossoms on Thursday or Friday, depending how I feel. Bye-bye.